Here we are. Here yeah. We are. What? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be, it's going to be like seven minutes before anyone shows up because they're going to be like, no, these never start on time. Never. Never once. Never once. That's not true. I think maybe we've been on the dot a couple times. But. Well, now we can start talking about all the campaign secrets. <laughs> well, no one is watching. And someone will come in halfway through a, a sentence and be like, what? Oh, what are you talking about? Yeah, I tell you the thing that I was working on when you got here. Yeah. So um, Susan Morris, for people who are, nobody's here. Why am I telling nobody's you? Nobody's here. Um, <laughs> that she and I came up with this, this ridiculous game that's called um, Bad Manuscript Wishlist. Oh, yeah. So agents and editors will use this thing called Manuscript Wishlist. Um, to ask for things that they want. And sometimes that's great, and it gives you a good idea of a good fit. And sometimes it is just, like, the weirdest thing, where it's like, let me write, somebody write me this specific story. If so, you like, happen to have something that somebody really wants, that's perfect. That's yeah. know, fate right there. And it's the thing I found funny <laughs> when we first talked about making this. So now we're like, well, what if we did this, and it was like a story generator, right? Here you can have a high-concept story. Um, so it's like, uh, I want property, but with a character, but in time period, yeah. location, and also there's a magic monkey wrench. So the example being, I want Tank Girl, but with an Asian protagonist, but in medieval Russia, and also there's a psychic parakeet. Um, <laughs> so we came up with like four, three or four formats to do this with. Oh, it's just three. Um, and uh, so format two being, I want extremely detailed historical event, but with genre element, and they do verb. Like, I want the story of the night witches in Russia, but with a meet cute, and they have to save the rec center. Um, yes. Nice. Right? So This is like Mad Libs. Exactly. Yeah. It's Mad Libs yeah, for perfect. just a, kind of a goofy writing thing. So we were talking about resurrecting this as a like story generator, and she's like, Oh, like specific historical events. It's hard to come up with. I'm like, no, girl, I got you. So I, uh, I have made the list that includes uh, the Boxer Rebellion, the Whiskey Rebellion, the Manhattan Project, the well defen met, fellow Eric. Defenestrations of Prague, Ooh. and the Munster Rebellion, which is super bonkers. Ooh. These Anabaptists took over a city and went nuts. Nice. It was crazy, and people got murdered, and is my favorite kind of thing. It's weird crazy stuff. and murder is always good. I mean, in, in a book. <laughs> I, I mean, in reality. In the far off history where you're like, man, I'm glad we're not like that anymore. I'm glad. Ooh. Ooh yeah. brought it down. So on that note, <laughs> hey everyone, it's good to see you. Hello. Welcome to this last interview. I put the quotes because yep. there might be more, who knows. No, nope, uh, you have to ask all your questions now. Or I, I got to ask Aaron all the rest of the questions. Yep. So, uh, and, and you <laughs> need to ask all the questions now because Aaron is going to answer all of them. Everything about the all campaign, she knows everything. I posted my thing about Cecilia so they know I'm I'm not always the most truthful character. I really liked the thing you posted about Cecilia. Thank I thought that you. was really nice. I was like, damn, it's like this woman oh. writes fantasy novels or something. That one, I got excited because I kept trying to write her bio in like a kind of like, Cecilia, the little sky. I was like, half elf, sort of, uh, what is she? Half elf warlock. Half elf witch. It just always felt weird. And part of the reason, this is, I'm just going to jump without a question. Part of the reason, I think in the end, is the fact that Cecilia is someone who is kind of protecting herself by lying about everything. <laughs> so yeah. having a having a bio that's truthful, like in a normal way, felt bizarre, but having a bio that's truthful in a sort of thematic way, right? Truthful like, in a, in a non-accurate way. So I followed my heart and I did that and I was like, I hope that. It worked out really well. I, I think. It. I think <laughs> nobody comes back and goes, no, not Mike, that. Mike, do not delete that. <laughs> Aaron does not have a copy. All right. It's the only one in the world. Okay. Okay. So, um, this doesn't I mean, scroll, so we'll try to keep yeah. that. But I'm obviously know, Eric. This is obviously Aaron. You've seen <laughs> us before. You've seen her a lot more than me, probably. Yes. For those of you, you're, let's see, I'm uh, Aaron M. Evans, the author of the Brimstone Angels saga. And you are? I'm Eric Scott DeBee. I wrote oh, the Shadow Bane series and a bunch of Forgotten Realm stuff and other stuff as well. And uh, we're both big uh, geeks professionally, so here we are. Just a bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, since Erin has been interviewing all of us, we have decided to have me interview her because, uh, 
why did we decide that? I don't know. Anyway, it, it works out fine. Yes, everyone knows who I am. And I guess. you can get to my house that, at the right time. That is true. This, and you're delightful. This lady is the big, the big draw, but I, I bring a certain oh. a certain amount of interest to the video. So, anyway, <laughs> all right, uh, let's just start on with uh, questions. You've uh, you've told us a little bit about yourself. You want to tell mm -hmm. us some more about yourself and your writing and what you're planning for the future, that kind of thing. Um, this is the part I'm bad at. Mm. Um, so I, uh, I wrote the Brimstone Angel Saga, which is a six book series set in the Forgotten Realms. Um, it is about tieflings, it is about dragonborn, it is about devils, it is about what happens when your family becomes your family of origin and how you navigate that life thing. Um, and I love it a lot. So <laughs> you should read it too. Um, well, hard to Watsi, come by, but... Watsi loved it a lot too, and published a number of things. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 good. You should read it. Oh, to a point. Um, <laughs> but the uh, uh, so I wrote that. I wrote the God Catcher, uh, which I recently learned is like somehow involved in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. I, That's cool. I had no idea. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Someone I told mean... me on Twitter. They're like, "That's a good book, but it's so weird that this is." Part, like inspired this sort of thing. I'm like, that is so weird. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I mean, the <laughs> the walking statues are a big They're thing cool. in Waterdeep. They so, cool. I mean, you could easily involve one of those. I don't know. Neither of us has played Dragon Heist. So. I know. I feel bad. I'm so, like, someone was asking me questions about an imp in one of the adventures earlier, and I was like, I was answering just like, these are what I think the imp rules should look like. And they're like, no, no, this imp. But I'm like, I don't know. Oh. Some uh, some friends of mine bought the the platinum edition yeah. of Dragon Heist, and that's Ooh, the, the pretty amazing. The Beetle and Grim one. Yeah, the Beetle and Grim I one that costs like five hundred dollars or something Dang. is amazing. Like three of my friends at Gen Con, they uh, they weren't even drunk. I don't understand it, but you know, <laughs> like, some, must... some people are really really big into this D and D thing. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I was a. Uh... For a time, I was an editor for the Forgotten Realms line and for Eberron. And we have worked together. That's true. You have edited some of my books and given me some very memorable uh, feedbacks, but I'm not going to say it. Never, kind of love you. I'm not. That. I'm not going to say it. But um, she knows what I'm talking we, about. We have been on uh, TOCs together because we were yes. both in Realms of the Dead, mm -hmm. and we we're both in uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord. What is that? That's What's right. That that collection of uh, of. Um, which is very good. Chronicles of the Chronicles Demon Lord. Of the Demon Lord. That's of the Demon it. Lord. Yeah. That's it. I like those stories. Those yeah. turned out pretty good. Which were thematically connected stories. Yeah. They didn't all take place in the same setting. Mine actually took place in my role of ruin setting. <laughs> mine, which is real cool. Mine was, in some ways, me working through my grief at the end of Brimstone Angels. Aww. Um, but yeah, the Demon Lord is coming and nobody is listening to the character that is definitely not Farida. But it's a little free. Definitely not free, though. Speaking of people who are <laughs> definitely not things, let's talk about Cecilia for a second. Who Cecilia is, is definitely not Farida. Definitely not Farida. Also, definitely not a warlock. No. no, no so, no. since she's not, a, she's not a warlock in any <laughs> I, respect. I, I feel like with this crowd, we can sort of dispense with the illusion. Well, I don't know if the other characters can, but the fact, I realized, like, one thing I really enjoy about this character concept uh -huh. is that if you are a big realms geek and you are into the lore, you know immediately that she is not a Hathrin, that she is presenting herself as a Hathrin, but she cannot be a Hathrin. Hathrin are not half elves. Right. Um, and so there is this little nugget in there, and that, like, it doesn't matter if you don't know. If you don't know the realms, and you don't, or you don't know that particular area of the realms, you're not missing anything in particular. You know, it's going to come out in other ways. And there's a certain amount of, you know, every time I introduce her and I say, well, no, bitch, um, which, that everybody's kind of in on it to an extent. I'm um, pretty sure Stong 100% believes you were just a witch. Stong is very trusting. Very, very trusting. Um, okay, so I don't know why this doesn't scroll. It's, it's so frustrating. It's odd that it doesn't. Because I feel like the, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, but but Yang Yang is supposed to send questions, so if we don't answer them right away, they are coming. We are answering right. them. Right. Uh, thank you for all the love about um, Brimstone Angels, and oh, um, you spent time in Downshadow. Down That's really cool. I didn't know Downshadow still existed. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, you know, 
when Wizards decided to do the Sundering thing, I figured a lot of that stuff was just kind of wiped away. So it's all, all of it, all of it. Maybe they kept the cool things. I dug my, I think I dug my heels cool in thing. some things, because oh, there, was, there was some like, maybe we should get rid of this, and I was like, I need that. <laughs> this woman don't. right here, hero <laughs> of the 5e realms, right here. Oh, so Cecilia, though. Cecilia is, um, she is a half-elf from Rashman. Um, she is, shows up in Westgate with her half-sister with a, uh, uh, half mask and, uh, is kind of just making herself at home in a way. Um, yep. she, uh, I, I don't know, does any, did, did we decide whether they had seen her, uh, the Archfey or not? No, I think they didn't. I think they That's have right. not. I think only Cecilia has seen... I will tell these guys, because it is a novel tie-in, that the entity that Cecilia has a pact with is uh, Horanawachu, the Heart of the Piercing, from Mark Sehestet's uh, Frostbell and Chosen of Nandoin series. You will see her again in the game. Don't worry. And, like, I, I love describing her. So <laughs> it... She's fabulous. She's. I, I love the fact that I feel like I'm like supposed to talk about me and my work, but I'm going to talk about Mark first. That's again. fine. Um, what I love about her is she is this archfey that has been worshipped by the Lothari, right? The uh, the sort of werewolf elves that live in the east, um, and so she has taken on aspects that feel more godlike, because as you know, we we do in the realms like the the uh, the worship makes the god in a lot of ways. So. You know, there, he, he does a lot of things with different uh, Archfey in his book. So you have, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten her name. They have one that's sort of the little, she looks like a little girl, and she's, like, really uh, power-hungry and a little bit crazy. Um, you have, like, really glamorous kind of elves. And then you have Karan Wachu, who appears in two forms. One is as a giant wolf, and one is as a, a naked elf woman covered in blood in the cave. Guess which one I prefer. <laughs> So she's like, she's an oracle, and she's that sort of the, the inevitability of the hunter and death. And, and, and there is this sense of, like, it is still very fey like because it is here are the rules and here are the parameters, and we're going to stay with those. Um, whilst, and and, and it's, it doesn't care, right? It's very nature-y, mm -hmm. um, which feels a little, that inevitability stops feeling quite the sort of chaoticness of other parts of the Feywild, but it still like nests with it. And I really like it. I really like her. Um, so when I was like, okay, if I'm going to try playing a warlock again, uh, I want to do a Fey Pax and I want to have, I want to have Ron Watch. Um, who is a terrible match for Cecilia. Cecilia oh, yes. made this pact kind of like, <clears throat> like not thinking it through entirely or thinking like, okay, this might cause problems down the line, but that's future Cecilia's problem. Like right now, like I do this, I get some power. She wants me to do one thing, which is go find this woman who she says is my sister. Cool. Like, I can do that. That's easy. No problem. Um, that won't start a long quest. No. Or a she, series of missions. She won't come back and events. be like, I need another thing and mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. um, and and the other piece that that is sort of buried in here is like, why does she know who Artemisia is? Because um, they actually share their elf mother, who has just never been around ever. Like, I think she, Cecilia probably lived with her when she was, like, like one to two. And then she got dropped with her dad. Like, bye. Um, and so there is this lovely background piece where we said, we want to do this. And they said, here, DM, do what you want. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> it, it's going to be entertaining. Well, I do have excited. plans. Um, you get to see. Okay. So, um... So you're a writer, and you often get the uh, where do your ideas come from question. So I'm not going to ask <laughs> that. Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to ask gracious. where the name Cecilia comes from. Uh, it is a Russian name. Aha. Uh -huh. It is an, an uncommon Russian name. That's what I thought. I have to, I, I definitely, uh, I, I do that sort of cheat where you look for like a real world name. Um, but I try to like look for ones that aren't super common. Um, I don't always succeed at that, uh, and I try to, like, kind of choose around a lot, right? Like, uh, the, um, like, like, I, you know, Farida is a, like, relatively common Iranian name, right? My pharmacist is named Farida, actually. Um, Lorcan is uh, an Irish name, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarachi was actually supposed to be Sorsha originally, which is also an Irish name, but I didn't want to do that to the audio with narrator. So, <laughs> um, so that sort of thing, like, because they think we do that a lot anyway. We pull from like like older British names or older French names. You know, how many like you know Gavins are there, or um, mm. like, and and so there is a sort of bit of like you you scoop from from other places to kind of keep that that tone reach it out a little bit more. So there's so many cool languages and places and things. Um, so Cecilia is, because uh, Rashomon has a, a couple of different influences, but there is definitely like kind of a Slavonic, Slavic, Russian vibe through it. So I f- was looking through older names of that sort and that one popped out at me. Plus it's so fun to say, Cecilia. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> I should point out that uh, Song's daughter Mirabelle calls her Aunt Cece. <laughs> So, yeah, um, we came up with that because that made sense. Kids say kids cannot say Cecilia. So, so, yeah. That's right. It's it's tricky. Um, okay, so why, in your mind, mm-hmm. is Cecilia so distrustful of every NPC she has? <laughs> so some of this is like you know the here's my character Strawberry Box story, which like honestly has not come up. Um, and part of that, I think, is that when, when someone asks her kind of a surfacey question, she, she lies to them. And so mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, okay. Um, She's done a very good job of hiding but, from the past. Yeah. So, but, like, to give a couple of, like, bits, right? Like I said, you can't have a half-elf Hathorin, right? So I don't imagine the witch learned liked her very much. Um, there's other places you can get a wooden mask. I don't think any of them want her to have that mask. So Cecilia is someone who has been um, lied to and rejected over and over to the point where she's kind of like, okay, I only really trust me. Um, But also she's a huge liar, right? Like that's how she gets by. She assumes people aren't going to like her. She assumes people are going to push her away. So she first step is make them like you, make them like the version of you you can offer. Um, and if that doesn't work, if they're going to push you away, get out of there, do it first. This is terrible. This is a terrible coping mechanism. I want to be clear about that. But, um, so Cecilia is a hot mess. For now. Which makes her a great character. It really does. But so the, yeah, so the, um, what was I working, sorry, I have a slight cold and my brain keeps losing its train. Um, so why is she so distrustful, right? So as soon as someone, like, tries to manipulate her, she's like, oh, I know this game. I know this game, and I'm not playing. Con knows a con. Con knows a con. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which uh, is, is probably really annoying as a DM. Well, but, I don't know. Some but then the you time. can always, like... Some of the time I have enjoyed antagonizing Cecilia. <laughs> um, Thane, for those of you who have read my books oh, and know who Thane is, geez. Thane loves pissing Cecilia off, and, and she doesn't really have to try very hard. Nope. Just mm-hmm. just reveal herself to be there, and Cecilia will get increasingly upset, and yeah. it is great. Especially, I enjoy the fact that Thane's always like, are we best friends now? And Are you like, flirting with me? And so she's like, nope, yeah. I hate you. <laughs> things like, oh, I, I get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's been fun. Okay, and then the corollary to that question is, mm-hmm. how do I, I mean, someone create an NPC <laughs> who Cecilia will actually like? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. She what? likes Mirren. She I does like Mirren. Mirren. I think the thing with Mirren, she didn't trust Mirren entirely. No, I, I picked up on that. <laughs> but the thing is with Mirren is that she's very genuine. Like, she's very, like, herself. And so there isn't this sense of, like, I'm going to try to trick you into liking me. I'm going to try to trick you into liking me so you do stuff for me. Yeah. I'm going to convince you everything is fine, and I'm going to pull the rug out from under you. Yeah, with, if, with Mirren, she would just never, that would never occur to her. Right? Like, and, like, yeah. And, I mean, and similarly, like, I think that Cynthia genuinely likes Stong, mm-hmm. because Stong is, and, like, and like we were, ge- I was telling Yang Yang, like, there's a possibility that Cecilia might still manipulate Stong, and might still do things that weren't the nicest, like, she's his manager, and maybe she sees if she can take this in of 20%, <laughs> maybe she can take 25%, see what happens, uh-huh. but she'd take that 5%, and she'd buy him a present with it. It's not really okay, but... Like, in her mind, this is, like, this is how you, how people kind of relate to each other. So, 
just it's this like kind of competition of it so people who are genuine like that they kind of throw her game and she stops playing so much Makes sense. right and so in a similar way like she like artemisia is very similar artemisia isn't lying to Cecilia. now Cecilia is terrified that artemisia is going to realize that Cecilia is not an okay person and she's going to like push her away and then what then Cecilia's all alone again um but there's, I think that's really the key is like, if they are an open and honest and genuine person, like they're not playing a game. And so Cecilia stops playing too. And I think that once you're that person, like she's very protective, right? She's very protective of the party in a way, because like they're, she's loyal to them at that point. Like she knows they're not going, but at the same time, she's absolutely terrified that they're going to turn on her and be like, no, you're awful. We hate you. So I fielded, <laughs> yes, I fielded a couple of questions, or rather, right. uh, it looks like Randy fielded a couple of questions and then sent them to me. So Thank you, Randy. one was from Kendra, and that was, are we going to see Lendry at some point? That would be cool. That, I don't. That's really a question for me, I guess. It is. And the answer is, maybe. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope so. I think that would be really deep. I'm trying to remember what happens to Lendry, though, because he's in Cry of the Ghost Wolf. Hmm. And I don't, I don't know if he's available. Well, I mean, but again, <clears throat> Cecilia has spent uh, some time before the the game launches on Wednesday uh, away. That's right. In the in the frozen east, uh, fighting with red wizards in the snow, uh, in service to her patron. It is so, so exhausting. It, it is so much work. Well, so for those of you who are comic book fans, if you read the recent Batman run, there's this period of time when he and Wonder Woman go to this like other world where they have to fight monsters basically constantly. Um, and time passes differently in our world than in their world. So like a, like a couple hours pass in our world, but it's like a year or 30 years for them. It's kind of like that. Like, Cecilia has been fighting constantly for a significant amount of time. I mean, honestly, too, like, with Cecilia, it's like, it's been a week. It's forever. Because it's not what she wants to do. And the good thing um, about Warlock, I mean, witch powers, is they recharge on a short rest. I love that. I love that. I don't want to play anything else. <laughs> yes, it's a major advantage over wizards. Right? Like, oh. Especially, yeah, I can totally imagine if she was like, fuck, or I mean, forget it. I'm going to learn to be Athrin. I'm going to study all this stuff. And then she would probably be like, oh my God, it's so much study. Oh, I've been studying for so long, mm. Cecilia. It's been she 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, what? No, to be fair, I think that, that she's <laughs> lazy, but at the same time, like, once she's in motion, she's in motion, mm. right? And the way to mo put her in motion is usually to make her really mad. So if anybody was going to convince her to study to be a wizard, it would be getting rejected by the Wishler and then told yes. her to get out. She'd mm -hmm. be like, screw you. We'd be the best wizard ever. Watch Se me. Cecilia seems like a doer, and her motivation seems to be uh, largely spite. Yeah, like, that's you know, about right. You told me I can't do something, I'm going to do it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, other questions. Oh, since we're speaking about her um, witch powers, uh, are there concepts you've drawn inspiration from for favors for the pact. I'm not sure exactly what that question is, but like, I, I think I'm gonna interpret that to be like, what draws you about the warlock and this particular pact that you have? You already talked about her on watch a little yeah. bit, but you, you obviously have a fey pact and you went with blade, right? Pact of the blade? Yes, that is right. Why? Um, I chose the Pact of the Blade because I think, you know, she is coming from a warrior culture. Um, and so she tends to, if she uses her Pact Blade, which honestly, you know, it doesn't come up a ton because watch fault. Um, Except there was that one very memorable scene when you pulled out a Pact Blade and then Fane pulled out a Pact Blade. And you're like, <laughs> stop copying me. I forgot about that. That's right. <laughs> A pack blade is usually like a like a battle axe, mm -hmm. um, and because uh, I feel like that felt comfortable and familiar, and it felt like it went with Piranawachu, um in a way that the the tome didn't, um, and the chain. Okay, so like. 
The chain, the pack of the chain is perfectly cool. I can't think about the chain except to go to Tamzawad, who's one of my characters. Mm. He's the priest of Salune, and he fights with a spiked chain. And so part of me is like, that's Tams. You know, it and... also seems like <laughs> the, the pact of the chain is about enslaving this entity yeah. to do your bidding. And that seems antithetical to Cecilia's yeah, philosophy. Yeah, Cecilia is very much a person who, like, she doesn't like, which is ironic for being a warlock, right? But she doesn't like people uh, lording their power over everybody. She doesn't like feeling uh, not powerful. But I think also she really hates seeing people have power and abuse it, um, which is one of those sort of like, you're holding two ideas that are hard to fit together, girl, you're gonna have to sort that out. Um, so that's the other thing. But I honestly, I, I never read it because I'm like, nope. And it is, it, is West, <laughs> it is Westgate, so she is going to come across people who have power and are abusing God, her. it's all the time. <laughs> Everybody's the worst. Ugh. Ah, yes, okay. So, um, oh, uh, does Song have good reason to be concerned about Aunt Cece's influence on Mirabelle? Uh, no. No? I think, honestly, it, it's the kind of thing where the stuff that Cecilia does, because of Stong's parenting style, is it's all totally fine. Mm. I joke, though, I call her cautionary tale auntie. Like, don't do this. Don't teach your kid to do this. But then at the same time, like, she gave her a... a she gave her like a knife on her first day of yes. kindergarten. Yes. Like just in case. Just right? in case. Don't trust those. Here you are going to magic school at uh, Lady Dark Dance's Manor. Take this knife just, just in, in case. Just in case. But then, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Stong was like, oh, here, take this with you because it's kindergarten. You need it. Take my backup sword right? just in case. <laughs> He's up for her experiencing all kinds of things. Okay, so the next question. Of the monsters that Cecilia has encountered in the past, which is her least favorite and why? What were those Banderhobs? That's the one. Oh. The Shadow Frogs. Banderhob followed her out of the Feywild and ate her. And I Just spent most of the combat in its mouth. Which was blasting it from and within gross. its mouth and stomach. Yeah, that's true. I did get to do some stuff, but you, she you is did. not. You did land a crit with a witch bolt inside the Oh, creature. I forgot about that. Okay, that wasn't the worst then. She did like 60 or 70 damage. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> um, that witch, was gross. Witch bolt has been slightly changed in my uh, game because I think the, the raw witch bolt is kind of weak. And Cecilia really likes that spell. So, you know, I, 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 I let it be awesome. That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, ah, tell me about a goal that Cecilia is working toward. <laughs> I feel like Cecilia and goals are kind of antithetical. Does she seem like the but kind of woman with a plan? No. Cecilia doesn't. <laughs> Cecilia's goal is to, like, kind of kind of find an equilibrium and stay there um consciously anyway like she is not going in thinking like i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this. she there was one time where we we were playing and i didn't make every session and then we came back and eric's like tell everybody what your characters have been up to and i said <laughs> cecilia has spent the last 10 day in her bedroom flipping a stylus up like this so that it sticks in the plaster she managed six <laughs> and and now I feel like that was the moment that I kind of I kind of managed to crystallize like this is what I'm doing here. Um, but at the same time, right? Like the, she has all of these sort of internal complicated structures, right? Where she, you know, she gets really upset when people are are wielding their power um, cruelly or irresponsibly. But at the same time, like she wants power. So what do those two go together? Right? She doesn't like being told what to do. And yet she has this pact with this, this entity that says you're going here now. Um, which which is, she, she chose to enter into. Right? She did not think ahead on this one. She didn't think um, it through. So it doesn't there's, necessarily there's a certain think things amount through. Where like, I don't think Karan Wachu is like, here's the fullness of this agreement. <laughs> like I'm going to come and just be like, I need you come here. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to do, she's just like, you got to do this thing. You got to go to, to, um, 
Agarond and find this woman. She's your sister. Uh-huh. That's easy. You and then I got a couch her. to crash on. Done. You have to go and find her and protect her for a time. And then easy. I will come and you will do something else for me. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. That's oh, this, the time to get this out other of thing it. happens to be fighting red wizards in the endless frost. Forever. 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 For a long time. But, um, and so, and, and so there is this, this, like, <clears throat> this internal thing where a lot of it is, um, how do we, how is she going to reconcile these? How is she going to sort of figure herself out in a way? And also this idea of, like, feeling this intense fear of rejection, well, being the kind of person who will reject you just because she doesn't want to be the one who gets hurt first, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point, someone's, I assume, well, at some point, her, she's got this this mystery elven mother, right, um, that she, she didn't want to know about. She doesn't care, but she super cares. Um, and at some point, someone is going to come and say, why do you have that mask? <laughs> so she's, like, living on borrowed time, and she knows it, right? Like, there are these, there are things that are looming over her. Um, and, and we're in the, the sort of little beginning phase where we're like, no, everything is lovely in Westgate. Yes, the invisible clock is ticking. Okay, so the next question. In Cecilia's view, who is the leader of the Westgate Irregulars, and why is it Cecilia? (laughs) I feel like Cecilia probably wouldn't say out loud she was the leader, because um, it would mean that people would want things from her. But the reality is, I think when when push comes to shove, she's the one who's like, no, we're doing this. Um, she's the decisive one. Yes. It might be a random decision, and but it's a decision. She's kind of loud and, mm. and pushy. So once, yeah, once, once she's in motion, she's like, no, we're doing this because nobody gets to talk to you like that. Um, so I, I, she had to, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Part of me says Artemisia because she's the, she's the one who's a, like a responsible homeowner and, and like make sure stuff gets done. But also I think Cecilia thinks of Artemisia as her little sister, even though they might have any idea who's older. So um, are Cecilia and Artemisia <laughs> like co-leaders of the team? Yeah, maybe she'd feel that way. Mm. She'd feel a little, like, generous of it, yeah. Kalith could maybe be the leader if she paid her rent. Mm, Kalith is, like, (laughs) Kalith just does whatever she wants to do. She could spend the entire adventure in her room reading a book. She'd be fine. I think Sturge probably thinks he's the leader, but Tetsuya will not let that happen. Kalith can do whatever she (laughs) wants to do, unless it happens to be dating a necromancer. She cannot date that guy. Actually, I think Tetsuya, I think we were just talking, I'm like, I think Tetsuya might actually be like, you know what? You're learning from him. You're getting stuff. Why not? Don't stick with him, though. You don't People need him. always use each other. But I love him. No, no, no. No, you don't. No, don't, don't be don't. ridiculous. No, no, no. <laughs> you can do way better. Yeah, Cecilia, <laughs> Cecilia seems to be a little judgy sometimes. I don't know. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. She cares about their, her friends. Mm. She wants the best for them. That's right. The best is never some like <clears throat> skinny rando pulling zombies out of his bag. Okay. Going so, to Chult coming back with a zombie knife. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, he, he there was a session in which um Cecilia told uh um Aiden, Aiden who is Kayla's uh necromancer boyfriend, that like she had uh, disappeared onto <laughs> she, the streets somewhere, or and he assumed that that meant she was dead. Yeah. And so he sent zombies to go find her body, and they were unable to. So he reported back to Cecilia, I'm so sorry, I couldn't find her body. Don't worry, I'm going to keep looking. And Cecilia said, why don't you try Chult? And he was like, I think I told oh. him that he should go to Chult to grieve or something. I don't remember, but I made a really good... Uh, persuasion role. Exactly. And he said, you know, that seems like a good idea. So he just <laughs> walked away. And then a couple hours later, they they feel this, like, uh, shaking, trembling, and they see, like, their glasses of me just, boom, right, bubbling. And then they realize <laughs> that it's it's um, <laughs> it's Aiden coming down the street on a zombie tyrannosaur that he uh, animated in Schultz. That's why she should not date him. 
Or maybe that's why she should date him. Okay. Where are you gonna put a zombie tyrannosaur? In your bag of holding. Okay, fair. Okay, so <laughs> um, okay, so these questions, uh, these are other than Cecilia. Okay? okay. So which is not to say that Cecilia is not the perfect answer for one of these. Oh she may or may not most be. Most likely. Okay. All right. Who on the team is most likely to sell out the others for power? Surge. 100% Sturge, Sturge. 100% Sturge. <laughs> oh, you think so, huh? Yes. Okay, okay. I think that, that or at least I think Cecilia thinks that. I think Cecilia believes that Sturge would. I feel like Sturge would sell his own granny for an interesting magnet item. That's right. Like a, like I don't a, think he can help it. I a think plus like one ring of protection. Yeah. He would sell just... out his entire family. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, his family is well done. Yeah. This he, is the one place where I feel like Serge and Cecilia have, like, kind of, like, connection space. Because they don't get along. Like, their first, the, the first encounter they had is he stole something of hers. That's right. And she's never forgiven him. No. Um, she's not judgmental at all. She's, she does not hold grudges, ever. I regret oh, um, okay. The, uh... But then, yeah, when we had the adventures, like, dealing with Sturge and his brother, and there's, like, this moment, it's like, oh, I get it. Mm. You got family issues. I'm in. They're both looking for power. And they both have family issues. I think Cecilia is way more conflicted about her. Mm. She would say she's not looking for power. Which is a lie. But she doesn't know it's a lie. That's one of those... One of those layered things. So corollary about Sturge. If Sturge came to Cecilia mm -hmm. asking whether he should make a pact with an extra planar entity for power, he what would not. Cecilia say? She would say no. Mm. She'd say no. Nobody else should do this. She shouldn't probably have done this. I don't think she's self-aware enough to go, I shouldn't have done this. Um, not yet. Anyway. But she would like she would tell him, don't do that. And some part of that is going to, she will, She would express it as some part of that is going to be, don't take my thing. <laughs> I do this. You I make poor decisions. It. You need to make better decisions. But then I think that that's the other side is like, this isn't really a great choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the worst choice. Ranuwashu doesn't want Cecilia's soul. That's good. She's uh, not likely to make Cecilia do something really horribly abhorrent, just like a lot of work. Probably. I don't think it's in the. I don't. I, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like it wouldn't be canonical for her to do something like really atrociously horrible. Probably something Cecilia doesn't want to do. Probably something. Possibly something that goes against Cecilia's moral compass, but not like, oh, you know, go murder everybody in this village. I don't know. And it could be something very bloody. She does That's like true. blood a lot. Okay, so who, other than Cecilia, of course. makes the worst relationship decisions? <laughs> oh, that's this hard. Is, this is going to be a tough one. It is a tough one because I think, uh, on the one hand, it's Kalis for the reasons of Aiden that we've established. Yeah. Um, he did pull know. multiple zombies out of his uh, haversack, his handy haversack. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I just noticed my battery's dying. I thought I could get away without plugging it in. And, I'm going to do that real quick. And the rest of the team was like, where did those bodies come from? And he said, no, I just, you know, purchased them. And they're like, slaves? And he's like, no, no, no. I, they were already dead when I purchased them. And they're like... <laughs> I don't know if that makes it better. Stong is really concerned about the consent issues involved in the zombies. It's um, probably for the best that Shiny had already left before Aiden showed up. <laughs> Shiny, Adrian Cavetto, who is Stong's hetero life mate by destiny, is a, you know, a buffalo good paladin type, and he would not have got along with Aiden in any respects. It would not be okay. Okay. Um, but at the other side of it, um, so Artemisia, her half-sister, she likes to go out to the fest halls, find a guy, take him home, find the hottest elf guy available, take him home. Cecilia is not fussed about this. Like, okay, cool. I mean, yeah, why, why not? Yeah, I mean, not my can. thing. Not my thing, but cool. Um, and, but now she's dating this guy, Lilton, yes. who is the worst huge faker. He is lying about everything. Um. And and I know he's also you know likely likely to 
be an important element of a story arc somewhere. <laughs> We're gonna pretend that Celia doesn't know that. She just gets a bad vibe off him. She thinks that's, that guy is a liar. Con does con, right? Con does a con. And so she would probably be inclined to say Artemisia. Artemisia makes the worst choices because of that. But not in the, in the aggregate. In the aggregate, she makes perfectly fine choices. Those gentlemen seem nice and they're very attractive. But not yes. that guy. Not that guy. A uh, string and one night stand seems to be a good relationship choice in as far as Cecilia sees it. I mean, it means, so I think there's also a piece there where if, if Artemisia is just having casual sex, she's not leaving. If she's taking up with Lilton, and I honestly don't think Artemisia, like Aaron watching this goes, no, Artemisia and Lilton is a casual thing. It's just a like slightly less casual, more consistent thing. But it's, they're not um, like Artemisia. It's a recurring casual there we go. thing. But like it's mm -hmm. a it's a casual arrangement, let's say. Because mm -hmm. Artemisia doesn't want to marry him. Um, All right, that'd be ridiculous, right? That, that would never happen. Ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. But I don't think Cecilia knows that. I think that Cecilia gets very nervous <laughs> thinking about her sister marrying this this rich man who is clearly like full of it and going away. He's also and that's just terrifying. Incredibly handsome. I just you know I need to clarify. <laughs> like, uh, man. He has many charms. If you mix uh, Loki and the Goblin King, you'd get like half <laughs> of how awesome Wilson is in person. <laughs> It's partly because his, her eyes not burned out then. His charisma is over twenty. It, like it's in that extra tier. It's Dang. yeah. I I think when I wrote his stats down, his charisma was like twenty four or something. It's crazy. Anyway, there's um, you know once you go over twenty, it's just unnecessary. It, no one can appreciate it. He turns it down a little bit when he's with normal people. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Next. Oh, next question. Oh, good. Um, okay, other than Cecilia, who on the team has the most intriguing and potentially dangerous background story? Interesting. Now, I should clarify, all of us have very good yeah. potentially dangerous background stories. But I want to know which one appeals to Cecilia the most, or to Aaron the most. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Cecilia is uh, going to be like, like, no, I don't, appealing is the wrong word. Like, this just sounds like a, like a lot of things happening. And people are going to get mad at me for saying it's, this is this friend of yours or this parent of yours is stupid. And you should just leave them. <laughs> I um, mean, she'll say it, but <laughs> they'll get mad I at think her. that Celia is perpetually intrigued by Sturge's backstory. Mm. Because there are, there are bits of it that are uh, <laughs> confusing to her, but bits of it that are familiar. Right, um, you, and, have that, you have that certain connection and yeah, parallels. Yeah, and, and there, are, there are places where it has intruded in an interesting way. Um, Caleb is very mysterious, and Cecilia would really like to know what the heck is up. Like, Why is she banned from every library in the realm? She's like, every knows? library, mm. right? Like, she... Unusual. Like, definitely has a fire thing. She keeps mentioning the fire thing. And she has these wings, but she won't fly. Right. You found her in a tree one time. Mm-hmm. You found her in a tree. She was stuck in the tree. She got drunk and she climbed a tree and she got stuck. Well, she and we might said, have climbed the tree. Why don't you just fly down? Her. And she's like, she's like, just, just, just help me. It's, I can't. My wings get trapped in the branches. I can't stop. I think at one point she said, "No, I'm comfortable up here." Oh, I'll that just, might I'll have just been stay it. Stay up here in the tree for a while yeah. until you all leave. Something's up. I don't have to sleep. I'm I can respect a trance. certain amount of lying about things <laughs> that you don't want people to dig into, right? A little bit of like making yourself a better person, a more presentable person, because whatever, like we all came to Westgate from somewhere else. We might want to leave things behind, but I'm sorry, you're walking around with giant wings. You can't just tell me <laughs> that they don't work. You can't just. Or you're not. You can't just pretend they work and never ever use them. Well, she uses them like a like a cloak sometimes, like. Have you and ever seen play, the, the gargoyle show? It's like that. They move when she's like... When she's excited. excited. So like, they're not like stuck on her back cardboard. Like, something's like Yeah, Cecilia is endlessly guess. intrigued by this, huh? She's a little nosy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you will find out eventually. That's fair. Okay, so, <laughs> last one of these. Right. Other than Cecilia, who on the team is most likely to sacrifice himself for everyone else? Aww. Mm. Mm. This is the opposite I mean, of the first scenario. Part of me is like almost anybody. Oh, yeah. Right? I can totally see Stong doing it. Mm. Yeah. I can totally very see obviously Stong. it would be Stong. Stong's the one who leaped into the Quelzarn's mouth. Accurate. So. I can kind of see Rogar doing it. 
yeah. I can kind of see like, you know, working towards a thing where Rogart does it. Um, I can kind of see Artemisia doing it. Artemisia has this really big, like the, the sort of relationship between Sicilia and Artemisia is that Artemisia is sort of coming from this background where she's being told she's not good enough. She's not brave enough. She's not talented enough. Um, and Cecilia comes and says, let's go on an adventure. Let's go do stuff. Like, you can totally handle this. And and there, in that first arc, there was a lot of, like, Rhiannon playing with this, like, where, um, you know, how, how does she feel when when she has this sister who is much more reckless and braver in a lot of ways? Um, and, and is she really up to this, right? Because there's a lot of adventuring that Artemisia does not like. No, um, but she's Sicilian and Artemisia are very, very different in a number of ways. Yeah, I loved when we were doing the art. So I posted the portrait of Cecilia, um, and I love it because I think that it really got across what I was going for with Cecilia's fashion sense, which is that Cecilia has no fashion sense. She just like wears clothes that are there. She doesn't really want to think about do I look good in this because maybe she doesn't look good at all. Number one, is it convenient? Number two, is it comfortable? Number three, is it uh, available? Um, and so there was a point where we were sort of like jokey RPing where she's like, she's like, I put outfits in your closet for you to wear. <laughs> all you have to do is take all the things off one. I'm like, these were all in my closet. It's fine. Everything except the black dress on the top. That was in the mid-end, but I liked it. So I took it back out. And, <laughs> and she's like, the what? And I'm like, she stop just, taking my stuff. She gets like a little green in her face. <laughs> That little Step, steps a little bit farther away. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so I think there's this piece too where like I like this idea that Artemisia is like giving her nice fashionable clothes to wear and Cecilia is not doing it right. She's just like I'm gonna wear a tea dress and a poncho because they're both there and it's one part not knowing how to dress herself and being a little afraid of doing it and being critiqued and told it's wrong. <laughs> um, and then uh, one part trolling Artemisia because it's a little funny. And then another part that's sort of like, it's, it's the, the trolling, but to, to get a reaction, to get her to come and say, like, let me do it for you, right? To like kind of reinforce that relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Oh, who, who had sacrificed themselves? That was it. Um, so I think there's a possibility that Artemisia would at some point, if given that sort of like, I can be brave and I can be strong and I can, I can do this. Um, Kayleth, I don't think would. No, I don't think Kayleth. And I don't think so. I, like, <laughs> I feel like Kaleth would embrace dark power in order to save everybody. Like yes. it might it might harm her or kill her I mean, indirectly. I also feel like Kaleth would kind of embrace dark power because it was there. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I definitely the put that knowledge. hook out there and she just oh okay. So um Kelly had a question. Yes. Uh, what was Cecilia's um, highest feel good combat or mission? Like, what has she done that gave her <laughs> the most satisfaction? Um, oh, I think the best one is probably the, or one of our early uh, adventures. We were tracking down the, um, some, some shipment from House Vamos, Bad Dudes. And it turned out that there were vampires involved. So, and the, the shipment was a, uh, a crate full of corpses. Yep. Corpse dealer. Oh, I'm going to get yeah, it yeah. in with House Vamos. And you talk your face! Your face! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Cecilia That's, can't know that, but I might. Like somewhere, or maybe you're doing it to troll me. I have no idea. Somewhere in the in the eternal winter, Cecilia just woke up with like, <gasps> Wait, oh like no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're on this like carriage, this wagon. It's like moving. There's the vampires. We're fighting them, right? And this was when we had another player. We had... Um, yeah, uh, yeah shiny. Shiny, yeah. yeah. Um, the the paladin that I was talking about before, and right. he he engaged the main vampire, and they're having no, this epic no, no, no. duel. Even before that, he's All like right. he's like, this <clears throat> is mine. I have the radiant damage. I have the turn undead. I'm going to do this, and he's like, you know, he's he's role playing this, and and as though you're seeing the movie, and this is absolutely the spotlight is on shiny. This is when shiny is doing 
his thing. This is his moment. Yes. So this is why he was here. This is his death. He's fighting this vampire. He's doing a wonderful job. Oh, yeah. That vampire did not it, know what he was getting into. It got very hurt, and then he ran. And the thing was... The vampire ran, the not the paladin. The vampire paladin, paladin, paladin never, never runs. runs. Mm-hmm. Vampire ran. Since Sylvia and Artemisia had gone ahead, like, ready to, like, blast this thing when it comes by... And, laying an and ambush. You were laying an ambush, and mm-hmm. it, things started going sideways well before the ambush. So they're coming up as this is going on. The vampire runs out. He's like, he had, like, one or two hit points. Yeah, he was, he was definitely <laughs> running away. And I... I witch bolted him. I may have shouted witch bolt, bitch, and just obliterated him. It was great. And Shiny was so angry. <laughs> <laughs> because I got the kill. Uh, that was pretty good. I also enjoy the fact that when we almost got TPK'd by that gelatinous cube, I was the only one who never got eaten. Single gelatinous cube almost TPK'd the entire awesome. party of, I think you were fourth level at the time? Yeah, it was Ooh. insane. Like, we couldn't, we could not roll to save our lives. Everything went wrong. Oh. Well, I mean, when you get stuck inside one of those things, it does 6d6 acid damage every round, which is to everyone I mean, inside. nobody it. could get out. That was, I think, the weirdest thing. Like, Song at one point took a running leap to push Artemisia out because her strength is six and there's no way she's fighting she's her way out of that tiny. thing. She and he rolls a one, so we go right into it. And then freezes like this. Yep. Right. Bad news. And since you saved the day. Pretty good. That day. Okay. Um, so we are see. not well, we are to our favorite part of the interview. <laughs> which is the Mary Date Dump or in Westgate terms, that's the Wed Court Betray game. Oh, okay. I like that better. I wish that I wish that you'd thought of that or told me that before, but that's okay. Uh, well, I only asked. thought of it today, Every, so. <clears throat> everybody just, you know, re- redo it in your brain. Because that makes more sense than the dump. Betray Wed, is Wed Court Betray, dump. yes. Yeah. So, of the other PCs or NPCs that you have met oh, so far NPCs. in the game. Oh. Who would you wed? Who would you court? And who would you oh. betray? Oh. Hmm. And then I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So we do think that so is straight. So we can swipe the the lady ones off. Although I could do the cheat like Rihanna and be like, oh, Kaleth, I could get Kaleth with a boy. Um, like if Kaleth got hit with the transmutation spell. Yeah, she did that, and I'm like, you just want a hot elf guy. You're just like, which how, how do I make a half elf guy out of these pieces? Artemisia is very specific. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you meet this guy named Wilton. And she's like, <laughs> done. <laughs> like, yes. Hot, so. fashionable, mm-hmm. clean. Rich, clever, charming. I feel like the rich is less important than the culture, mm-hmm. right? But the money definitely mm-hmm. made that happen. Mm-hmm. Some of us grow up in, you know, huts in the hinterlands and we don't have time to learn things. All right, like, so you've what been, fork should I use? <laughs> you've been answering this question very roundabout sort of way. I am. See, you I'm can, the one who you started You can answer this one of the stuff. others if you like. You can, uh, how about court? Part of the problem is I think Cecilia's C- C- uh, romantic life is uh, fraught. Um, See, Aaron knew I was going to ask this I did, question. and I didn't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if I limit it to the party. To the party. We'll limit it to the party. You gotta, you gotta pick three of them. I feel like marrying Rogar Ooh. is not going to be a particularly fruitful marriage. Mm. But Despite that being the core of his face. Oh my god, it's the meanest thing. <laughs> I don't know if she could do that. It would be pretty mean. She, Rogar is the person that she sort of trusts to have it together the most. Mm. So, like, at the end of her first arc, Cecilia gets sucked away, and when she says goodbye, Rogar is the one she says, keep these idiots together. Like, make sure they're all okay. Um, Because there is a certain amount of, like, nonsense and doing goofy stuff and not realizing that, you know, the monster's going to eat you. Wait, I'm going to be your friend. And she's like, Rogar... Like, you and they're not necessarily, like, the same at all. But Rogar is, like, at least seems like he's got a certain amount of understanding on that. Sure. He has a lot of life experience. Yes. And, well, uh, it's and, and good wisdom. Good wisdom. <laughs> well, good wisdom. He'd probably be a real good dad. Yeah. Which would oh, not work for Cecilia in any way. 
I, um, I, I can't imagine Cincinnati having children. It might change. You know, that's it's true. always possible. At some point, change. we were talking about. But I think she's a very free spirited sort of person. I think that that is so far outside. I think she's coping with so much that that sort of level of thinking of the future is so far outside her capability. Like if it, if an LTR, a long term relationship, uh, startles and scares Cecilia off, I can't imagine having no. kids and owning a home and oh. founding a dynasty. There's just too many people to reject you. Yeah, right. that's right. So. Uh, I think then she would court Stong because they're already very good friends. Yeah. Um, and. And, and he plays the, well, he doesn't play the guitar anymore. He plays the drums, right? That's a thing. Yeah. Well, he um, plays a number of <laughs> he, he attempts to play a number yes. of instruments. Um, and, and, and there is that piece. And actually, I don't know. I might even think about switching those because, because Song is somebody who is, uh, who's very genuine. And so, like, he's not going to pull the rug out from under her. Mm. Um, so maybe court both of them and see ridiculous. how it goes. Maybe. Well, and Stong has a has a daughter too. That's true. Who it, a not daughter, but B, she's really cute. She is. I think Cecilia likes Mirabelle, and she likes being anti anti CC. Yeah, like Mirabelle is like the only kid that Cecilia that you know of kind of likes that. You, oh, that's true. That's true. Who knows what's back in the Mysterious. Room. So I guess that leaves Sturge <laughs> for there, betrayal. There was no moment where Sturge wasn't the one that Cecilia would betray. Sturge, Sturge is a very specific character. But I think at character. this point, she would feel bad about it. Hmm. She might like try to justify it a lot. Because you've seen Beneath the Mask a little bit. A little bit. Hmm. Okay, so the follow-up question. Yes. Which I, I think the way you answered that question makes this a good, a good question. Awesome. Describe Cecilia's perfect date. And I'm going to take notes. <laughs> so this involved, this kind of involved a story because this kind of came up. Like um, if Cecilia had a romantic relationship with an NPC, like what this needs to be true? I mean, why would I ask that question? No. Um, and so I went and, and did what I call Blind Date the Realms, where I just imagined Cecilia with as many different characters as I possibly could. And what I learned is, these people are terrible to date. <laughs> uh, or more specifically, that Cecilia would be a terrible girlfriend for pretty much anybody. Because it'll be stuff like, you know, anybody who's got like their own problems going on who needs somebody to be sort of supportive like, there's a point where she can be that person, but it's not really. Um, I've, oh, man, I kind of wish I'd pulled up the whole thing. Because uh, I came up with, I think I came up with two possible options um, that are both kind of terrible. I can't remember what one of them was. Oh, no, I know what it was. Okay, so one was, I actually think that... Cecilia could date a pre-Farida doll parador. I think that they would uh, they would spark a lot and uh, and and have a really messed up relationship that involved yelling at each other until all of a sudden they were sleeping together somehow. Mm. Um, and then they would sometimes absolutely have the messiest, nastiest breakup for uh, that anyone ever saw. It would be awful. Right? Super dramatic. And um, and then I was thinking and I I was testing her on lots of people, so I was thinking about Doll's grandmother, uh, Seska Parador, um, who is very like Doll in some ways. She does not suffer fools. Um, she is she she's like ninety, and she was a Jintarum, uh weapons runner and assassin when she was young, and she's uh, she's just like she she's very smart. She thinks very fast, and she does not she does not suffer fools. Um, and I was like, no, but also that feels like theoretically what an old Cecilia would be like. Like once she's dealt with some of these problems, that maybe this is the kind of person she becomes. So what worked for Sessica? What made Sessica settle down? And it was this, you know, this farm, nice farm boy who is entirely genuine, right? He's not faking anything. He's not rushing her. And he's very important in this is not paternalistic. Like, I don't think, it's, I think anything that smacks of like, I'm going to be like your dad boyfriend. No, mm. like she wants an equal. She wants somebody who's, um, <laughs> I don't see Cecilia in like a made to December romance. I think she has enough, enough current issues that, 
that it's the reverse. It's not like, oh, I want to replace this. It's like, this can stay away from me forever. Um, so yeah, Lamhale Peridor, or he's not Peridor, Lamhale of, of, of Harrowdale, who's very, very dead. So it didn't go very well. We did play this with Rihanna. I was explaining this to Rihanna, and she's like, do me now. <laughs> and I found her a really good one. So let me listen eventually. It's, you know, when that dies eventually and goes, goes back to the abyss and a fiery ball of doom. <laughs> which I think Cecilia would say, I'm not actually no at all, but that could be remotely possible. You're like, I'm saying this thing, which is clearly an like, exaggeration. And you're I'm terrible. Not... You're like a demon thing. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm just going to toss a couple of characters at you. and You tell me how Cecilia would uh, get along with these characters, or not. Romantically, or just Oh, personally? just in general. Okay. Um, Let's see if I can remember those cycle. <laughs> Minsk. Minsk. I don't know that I know Minsk well enough to really get a sense. I feel I like think Minsk is a lot like Stalin. Yeah, that's the vibe ways. I get. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that's the thing is I get this. I know the surface vibe of Minsk, but I don't know him on a deep down level. I think Cecilia would probably treat Minsk sort of like between Stalin and Marin, where she's like, like, okay, okay, whatever is happening here. Um, but eventually would kind of settle into like, okay, I respect you. And the fact that he's from Rashomon, right? Originally. I believe so, yes. Yeah, so. There, there, I think that she would worry that he'd clock her, that he'd be like, wait a second, what? So she would probably want to like, like if he, if he showed up in Westgate, he's like, hey guys, let's be friends. She'd be like, no, don't invite him. Don't, no, don't invite him at all. But you know, when he kept coming around and he showed no sign of having realized a <laughs> maybe sort <laughs> I of connection. I think at that point, she's like, super nosy, like what's going on? Like. <laughs> Nothing? And he's like, I don't understand. Because <laughs> my wisdom is six, and my, yep. intelli and my intelligence is eight. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay. Elminster. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Just pulling out the big guns right away. I, I think Cecilia would... Um... And remember, I didn't say it romantically. Like this, no, 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 no. That's not where we're going with this. But he's a uh, he's intense. He's intense, and and he's gonna say something. He's gonna say something, and Cecilia's gonna be like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> um, I think she would. I suspect, as in many cases, she might mouth off, not kind of realizing like the power differential here, which is a. If there's a, if the Sturge special is like disengage and hide, I feel like the Cecilia special might be uh, take it one step too far with someone. The Sturge special <laughs> definitely is disengage and hide. Like, that's the standard operating procedure. Um, okay, Danilo Fan. Oh. oh. I feel like I don't feel like Cecilia would appreciate him. I feel like <laughs> I feel like she would be like, "What is your angle?" Right, like, mm, mm, mm. like she she would definitely assume nefarious things were going on, which is terrible because because he's you know he's fun, but I feel like Cecilia would just be like, con knows a con. Con knows a con. <laughs> she would definitely go to there, whether that's exactly accurate or not, because it's, but yeah. True. Okay. Uh, how much? How much more time do? I have? Oh. We're about yeah. there. We're about there. We'll go through. Uh, do we have any uh, last yeah. questions to ask? I'm going to check. Oh, I saw somebody, a question mark somebody wanted to know um, invocations that Cecilia might have. Do you remember off the top of your head? Oh, what are invocations? Is Beast Speech an invocation? Yes. Yeah, and then I have the one that adds my charisma modifier to my. Uh, which is glass. agonizing yeah, glass. Agonizing yeah, agonizing glass. And, and you just went up to fifth level, so did, you should just, have another one. I did. Too. Did you take Thirsting Blade? It, it seems unlikely. We talked about that, and I think I decided not yeah, to. Yeah, because you don't really use your melee attack very often. No, why would you do that when you have Eldritch Blast? I don't know if you've ever used your melee attack. Just, just to, just to, <laughs> just to really impress people. Fade. Do a superhero uh, landing. You did do that one time. Kelly asked, I RP'd Lorcan. Have I ever RP'd either of the twins? I oh. have. I have uh, replayed as Havilar twice. Uh, once in a. Uh, uh, what's it called? Child's Play Game. Mm. Um, 
what is it called? Extra Life. Extra Life, thank you. Um, Travis Play is similar, but... Um, yeah. Um, and then once the this year at PAX, I played a live game with the uh, um, High Rollers, and they asked if I wanted to play. And they, uh, they invited me to play as Farida, but I feel like Farida is not not great for role-playing, because mm -hmm. I think she's... So, so much of her is happening inside her head right. that it's hard to kind of get that across. Whereas she's also, just I mean, she's really also kind of the, the face of that series, right? Yeah. It, it, it'd be like asking Bob to role play Drizzt every time he sat down at a table. And it's know, just a little weird. That's interesting, too, because, like, there was a time when we were doing, we were doing the Sundering. We had, like, the story meetings. It wasn't the first round. It was, like, the second round. And there, I don't know why there were guys with cameras. Um, for parts of it, but they, they were like, oh, let's play D&D. &D. Let's play D&D &D together, and everybody can play their characters, right? And so Ed was Elminster, and uh, Troy was Cleef, and uh, Richard was Skyped in, so I think, but I think he played, I don't know, um, Anton. And I was Farida, which nobody listened to me at all. I just want to say, like, she had very good ideas, and no one listened. But Bob did not play Dritz. He was like, I'm going to be Spider. And I don't blame him. Like that's a mm. that's a that so, feels like a more fun character yeah. to just jump in if you're not gonna do like a. I think that's the other thing is that Farida. I feel like is a, a long character. Like she's in in like small doses. She doesn't like have the right kind of punch. Um, mm -mm, a pack is better than a pack with the devil. <laughs> Generally, definitely, Cecilia is not gonna sleep with her pact master. So. Does her sex, sarcastic pessimism stem partly from her rejection of her mother? Oh. Um, yes. I mean, I think that's the that's the, the the original original wound is having your mom like you know drop you off and somewhere you should not be dropped off and just leave and never come back. Um, yeah, there's a there's a little bit of that going on. Uh, how does she get along with her party members? Mostly. I think she likes everybody as much as she, she hasn't likes killed people. any of them yet. Yeah, yeah, she didn't kill anybody. She didn't stab anybody. She didn't hand anybody over to the. I think cops. I think Cecilia is <laughs> a, actually kind of a good person. I think. Thank you. I, I, I you know, she puts on a on a good face, right? And she's trying very hard to be, you know, ah, or, ah you know, I'm in yeah. charge and I'm totally independent. But I think that, you know, she values people. She wants, I think she wants very much for these people just to, like, stick around and be her friends. She's just never, ever going to say that She out seems loud. a little bit like the kind of person who says they don't want to have friends and family, but that's really all they really want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We need some curtains on that window. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Maybe. The lighting has been a consistent oddity. <laughs> when it's it's not, a very cool little when, room, though. When it's not winter in the Pacific Northwest, this looks out onto a beautiful viburnum and a lovely little winter Daphne bush. Mm -hmm. um, but it is but, winter in the Pacific Northwest yeah, um, for about nine months out of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that might be all of them. When she first found her sister, did it trigger any mommy issues? I don't think so, because I think that Artemisia has the same kind of feelings. Also, Artemisia has a stepmother who's terrible, so it's sort of like, oh, here we go. Like, proof this is not worth it. Um, and then now she has a sister, and it's like, oh, I have a family. I don't need this absent mother. Eric is devious. Yeah, well, we knew that. <laughs> uh, other than Eric, who's been your favorite DM? Oh. That's a good question. Um, Thank you for, for putting that in. <laughs> That's like assuming that I was her favorite DM, which is not necessarily the case. So, but thank you I, for sparing my feelings. I really <laughs> enjoy, I have, I, I've played with a, a couple, but not a ton of ton of DMs, but um, I think my other favorite is uh, Susan J. Morris, who was both of our editors, yep. where she worked on Forgotten Realms. Um, and she is really good at, uh, at, at and just making it a very immersive experience. She's very thorough, very she prepared. Makes really good props. Oh, she's so prepared. Mm -hmm. She's you can't go off you can't go off the script because she scripted that. Like she's just like it's just this wonderful feeling of like you walk in and whatever you're planning to do, whatever you decide to do, like she's got something ready there, um, which is interesting. I I have a hard time. I always have had this like. Where I, I come into a D&D &D game and I think too much about it like a book. So I worry I'm going to break the DM's narrative. 
-hmm. And really what you have to do is kind of do whatever you want because that makes the narrative in a lot of ways. Exactly. Uh, which is also why I frequently am like, Eric, what if I do this? And I'd be like, no, please um, do that. <laughs> <laughs> but she would do things like we had a, um, we went to the spirit world. This was a homebrew game. So we went to the spirit world and, and we had these, these spirit people were like, okay, we want you to help us solve this problem. And to help you, we'll give you these berries. And if you eat the berry, um, it'll give you a power. We can't tell you what they're going to do because they're all different. Um, and also when you eat this, you might, it might become permanent. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, we're going to roll percentile dice. <laughs> I love percentile dice. And then she pulls out this bowl full of jelly beans. It's like jelly bellies and birdie box beans, right? And so you pick one and you eat it and you tell her what flavor it is. And she says, oh, you've got, I ate a barf jelly bean and got the powers of the spirit of the jellyfish. So I had concealment because I was translucent and I had long stinging fingers, oh, which meant I couldn't hold my sword, mm. but I could slap a guy mm. and, and attack him. And, and, and we, a reasonable one, trade -off. we fed one to, we had this like pigeon mm -hmm. that our ranger had, like a little messenger pigeon. <laughs> he may not have even been his original pigeon, but we fed the pigeon that, and it, it was a licorice one. And so he was imbued with the spirit of the wolf. He did not roll very well, so he was permanently turned into a wolf pigeon, and we named him Poop Smith and trained him to poop in people's faces. <laughs> it was wonderful. But it was stuff like that. Like she, she would do. She does things like, like the props are really fun. Um, she spends a lot of time on them, and the stories are, are really complex. But there's a lot of like interesting bits of interactivity. Like we go to a party, and here's a menu, and she's like, okay, what kind of wine do you want? And you say, oh, I want to drink this wine. And she's like, okay, that gives you this bonus. Or like, you know, you find a bag of powder and you, our wizard just would take all kinds of drugs and, and, and things would happen. Or she'd like have candy out and you're like, you eat it. She's like, okay, that's a thing now. And it's, I don't know, it was, it, you, I real can't imagine. Real creative and real immersive. I can't imagine doing that. That's mm -hmm. too much work. But. It is a lot. It was fun. It was really fun to play. Yeah. Um, I think that we are set. That is it. I think we've caught all the questions. I think we have. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for uh, doing this, Erin, and for telling us about questions. Cecilia. Um, tune in to our show on Wednesday. Yes. It's going to be great. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. Uh, Six thirty Pacific time is when we're aiming to start. It might be a little bit late. You know, it's the first show, so you know, we'll see what happens. And so, yeah, kid, get. It. Everybody who can watch live, please watch live. Those are the metrics that uh, decide whether we get to keep doing this. Exactly. Um, if you can't and you can only watch after, that's that's okay. That's fine um, too. Just but, you know, you know, if, if you best. can watch live, that would be very <laughs> helpful. That's what we're saying. All right. Thanks, Thanks. again. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>